I'm Chris McDonough, a retired homicide detective. I've interviewed thousands of people, from serial killers to ministers. Welcome to the interview room.
America has been written to the crack of an assassin's bullet. A nation mourns, the world grieves. The man who became 35th president less than three years ago is dead. He led his country boldly through the treacherous shoals of Cold War crises. His firm commitments to support the cause of democracy throughout the world won him a claim almost unprecedented in the history of the presidency. He faced up to communist threats with such firm shows of force that Khrushchev backed down in Cuba, softened the hard red line on Berlin. He brought to the White House the vigor of youth and a family that captivated the hearts of all. No possible shadow loomed over this last group picture of his family, John and Jacqueline, John John and Caroline. Death has closed the cover in album portraits like this. His rendezvous with Grim Destiny begins a little after noontime as his plane lands in Dallas. Earlier, he had received a tumultuous reception in Fort Worth, and now more thousands are waiting to greet him in downtown Dallas. But death is less than one short hour away. At 1.25, the motorcade moves into the downtown area. Death is six minutes away. In a warehouse, a sniper with a rifle poised waits. The cheers of the crowd almost muffle the three shots. The assassin's aim is deadly. The area is a swarm with police, rangers, and secret service men. The murderer slips the net, but a few blocks away, a man is captured after he is reported to have killed a policeman. That man is a 24-year-old pro-Castro Texan who once sought Soviet citizenship. He is charged with murder. Meanwhile, the president had been rushed to a nearby hospital where life lingered as a waiting world prayed. A half hour later, he was dead, his life crushed like his wife's abandoned bouquet. A shocked nation weeps. Across the country, around the world, Disbelief was the first reaction, then a great outpouring of grief, shock, and revulsion. A proud banner is lowered. The empty White House is a symbol of this infamous mockery of American ideals of peace and freedom. Peoples of all faiths unite in prayer for the first Catholic to become president. The United Nations General Assembly joins in a minute of silent tribute, tribute to the man who fought so hard and valiantly for the ideals of this international body. The Iron Curtain was dissolved in the sincerity of their sorrow. As always, democracy finds its strength in the continuity of the presidency. Lyndon B. Johnson becomes the 36th president of the United States just 99 minutes after his predecessor's life had ebbed away. The widow, with stamina born of courage, stands bravely by the new president's side. Mr. Johnson accompanies the martyred president's body back to the Capitol, a Capitol still paralyzed by shock. Sad tasks are ahead. It is arranged that the president's body will first lie in repose at the White House. Then it will be moved to the rotunda of the Capitol for public homage. The president's body is met by a cordon of servicemen. They represent all the armed forces in honoring their commander-in-chief. The widow, on the arm of her brother-in-law, remains a towering figure of fortitude through her long ordeal. Steadfast in death as in life, she accompanies her beloved on his lonely ride. Then President Johnson and the First Lady leave the plane. Now the Texan who has devoted his life to an energetic public career faces the burdens of office in days of foreign and domestic crises to keep burning the torch that has inspired a free world. 
With humility, the President of the United States parks to the future. This is a sad time for all people. We have suffered a loss that cannot be weighed. For me, it is a deep personal tragedy. I know that the world shares the sorrow that Mrs. Kennedy and her family bear. I will do my best. That is all I can do. I ask for your help and God. In some men, the presidency has bred greatness. They have become giant, forged in the crucible of courage. Now begins a new chapter in the history of a nation grown great under the inspired leadership of great men. President Johnson faces his monumental tasks with a sense of integrity that is unquestioned, with knowledge that breeds respect, and with hope that God will guide his hand. Far into his first night as president, he faces his awesome future unflinchingly. The light of reason won't be dimmed by a rifle shot. May God, in his wisdom, help President Johnson keep it shining brightly. <laughs>